Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to this very, very special moment uh, of Synchronicity Web TV. And this is your moment of synchronicity. I am here with the very fabulous OP, one half of the incredible Astro Twins. Thank you so much for being here. Thank oh, I'm you. so happy to be here. And Wish so, I was in Mexico. <laughs> yes, well, everybody is in spirit, aren't they, with the sun and the beach. <laughs> yeah. But um, I wanted to say that I am just so grateful for this time with you, uh, for me jumping back into interviewing people and what it is that we are going to be sharing here together besides just hanging out and learning about each other and me learning about you is also we get to share an amazing new event that is coming up called Starstruck. So I'm really happy to talk to you about that as well. For those of you who don't know, the Astro Twins are legend. They are legendary and they are the astrologers for Elle magazine. They've written like 10 books and they are uh, people that I have looked up to in the astrology community uh, that I remember looking at as role models way, way back when. So this is such a uh -huh. surreal moment for me. <laughs> I'll tell you. I, and I was just sitting there in my sweatpants typing out horoscopes. So thank you. Well, yeah, I get it. Anything like just below what you see on camera is pajamas. Always. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, an interesting little story. I remember a few years back, I um, a friend contacted me and he said, oh, you're in French Vanity Fair. Wow, Nadia. And I was like, really? And so then he sent me the link and I looked at it and it had like Nostradamus 2.0, the top 12 astrologers on the planet. And the fact that I was on that list with you guys, I, that now. That, no. I was like, I made it. I just felt like, oh my God, whatever it is, I have reached it. Oh, or something Aww. like that. <laughs> You're so sweet. Thank yeah. you for saying that. I remember that article now. That's so funny. Yeah. But I know that you guys are so used to being in so many articles on so many lists, so many incredible things that you guys continue to do. So I am all about starting from the beginning, right? So tell me, how did you get started in astrology? What was that journey like? Yeah, well, um, probably like most of us, uh, going through a time of trying to learn about myself in my early 20s, and, you know, somebody says something about like, oh, I'm an Aries, or I'm a Taurus, and you're like, what, what is that? What does that mean? You know, I'm a Sagittarius myself with a Capricorn rising and Scorpio moon. So my college boyfriend, who was Virgo with a Scorpio moon, uh, got me a chart as a gift when I was 21. And, you know, I knew I was a Sag, but uh, I discovered that I had the moon, Mercury, Venus, and Mars all in Scorpio and my midheaven. And suddenly it made sense because the things I've read about my sun sign were like, you know, sure, that's true about me, but I have this intense and inquisitive side. So I got hooked and I found some software, started doing friends charts. And you know how it is. It's like a, it's a gateway drug. You become obsessed with like, God, why? I could get to know you, but I need to look at your chart too. You know? I, I too remember seeing my chart, you know, getting that computer printout like you did. And it was just yeah. like, oh my God, it was me on a printed document. It was, it yeah. was just the most mind blowing thing. And I think that a lot of people end up on this path, quote unquote, thanks to those very things, these computer generated reports. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing because it's like, okay, this 30 page document knows a little more about me than I can just dismiss. You know, I, I, I was like, I don't know if I believe this or not, but let me test it out. And so it's I probably, like you, looked at hundreds or thousands of charts over the years, and you're like, okay, this is the instruction manual that they say that people don't come with. We do. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. And so what was it like walking that journey with someone? Because you and your sister have been doing this together, which is part of what makes, uh, makes what you do so unique, is that there's this partnership at the same time. So how was that? Yeah, well, I'm an identical twin and we're born four minutes apart. I'm younger. So our rising signs, for those who know astrology, are one degree apart. Um, 
And so when there's like a big planetary transit, she'll get it before I do. So for me, I'm lucky. I get to see what I'm going to be getting into from the stars. She has to be the crash test dummy of it. But um, but having a twin is kind of like being born married, I say. Like you're born in relationship. You're always tuning into someone else. And I think that probably has to do with our astrological abilities we're just so used to always reading the cues but uh it's as as anyone who's ever attempted to create astrology content knows it's a lot of work so i'm glad there are two of us for that reason alone probably why we've been able to get (laughs) our message out there more you need you need an army to get this stuff out there in the world um but it's 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 great to have not only have someone who speaks the language of astrology with me so close all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think as astrologers, sometimes less so now, thanks to the internet, but you can feel very alone in the world because it is one of those things that's kind of like, yes, it is more and more mainstream, but at the same time, it's kind of not right. It's kind of out there a little bit. And so to have that sense of somebody really being in it with you, I can imagine that in some ways it must strengthen the astrology for the two of you. Absolutely. I mean, I think it, it, it's, people are isolated and disconnected and they, they want to feel special, but also united. And I think astrology gives us like, you still belong because you belong to your sign and you belong to this world of people that love the language of astrology and the study of it, but you still get to be unique uh, at the unique and fit in, which is so Aquarian um, in many ways. Uh, it's sort of the paradox of life. And astrology is one of the few things, few uh, outlets where, you know, you can celebrate the quirks and differences and, and talk about them. So, And so I know you do have Sag placements, so we can get a little philosophical here or a lot. I started hearing it already, which I loved. But (laughs) let me ask you, why do you think astrology matters in the world today? Um, uh, That's a great question. I think it matters because uh, science alone doesn't explain things. And then magical thinking doesn't, doesn't really we can't really buy that either. I think it's sort of the intersection of uh, methodology. It's a system. I think, you know, the average human being makes, I read a study makes 38,000 decisions a day. The average adult, we all have decision fatigue and um, having a system that helps us not spend all of our time in analysis paralysis. We need that in this modern world. So it's this timeless ancient tool that is still relevant and useful today. And have there been times in your life when you felt like astrology really helped you or was really there for you? Oh God, like every day. Uh, How about you? I mean, you must use it daily too, right? Oh, Oh yes. But of course I do as well. But I, I, for me personally, it was a lot of really hard transits that sort of Mm. really grounded me in this pathway of astrology when I saw how much it helped me. I had my Saturn return while simultaneously having Pluto conjunct my moon. (laughs) I know it was pretty much a doozy. And the interesting thing is that at my next Saturn return, which is still a few years away, I will have Pluto conjunct my sun. So that's, Oh my God. Universe is, uh, you know, pretty, pretty crazy. As I like to say, the universe is wise and loving. Yeah. Right. I, I'm waiting for that with the, with the Pluto <laughs> conjunction. Sometimes, yeah. That comes yeah. Right. Back. Sometimes it also, you know, it's after the Pluto conjunction that you realize the wise and loving part of it. Well, that's a good yeah. point. That's actually yeah. a really good point because that, that is where knowing astrology is so helpful because if you didn't know that you were having your Saturn return or a Pluto moon conjunction, you might feel like something was really wrong. Like it's not that I'm advocating blaming the stars, but it's like, okay, this is happening. If, if we say that there is no, there are no accidents as a divine law or order or logic to this, what am I supposed to learn from this? What am I supposed to get? Maybe it stops being painful when you get the lesson or you work with it, or you just, it's like radical acceptance. Astrology will make a Buddhist out of all of us. I love that. I love that. (laughs) Radical acceptance. 
it ha- it changes us, right? It changes the world around us too when we practice from that place. Those transits like push us out of our comfort zone. I'm in the middle. I have a Capricorn North Node and at 17 degrees. Saturn um, is at 17 degrees Capricorn today, right over my North Node. And all summer. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm pushing through, you know, all these uh, redefining who I am and what I want my business to be. And it's, it's painful at moments. And then I can just, but I'm so grateful and just look at a transit chart and be like, okay, it's in my first house. I am being birthed painfully into something new. And I have to be patient because that's what Saturn is demanding. And it's in Capricorn. So I have to restructure everything, but like, but ah, it's just such a relief to know that, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it also allows you to make the most of this time too. Yeah. And so Saturn rules your second and your third. Am I right about like, that? Um, yeah, well, it's uh, it rules my first, actually. I'm a Capricorn rising. Oh, ah, okay, so. okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. So then yeah. it would also rule your second because of Aquarius right. being there. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's amazing because you are really changing things up with this new thing that you're doing, Starstruck, right? Yeah. And that uh, we were talking earlier about how this really is a brand new thing for you. Mm-hmm. And I love that Saturn is on your North Node while you're doing this. Oh, my God. To me, that yeah. sounds like new pathways and you really aligning with... Um, with accelerating in a way your personal growth, but second house things too. So that should work absolutely, out. yeah. New yeah. Uh, revenue stream. Should we tell them about Star? Yes, Struck please do. Yeah. Tell me what I want to know. What Starstruck is because I'm really this is the first time I'm really learning about it. I just know I was asked to be a part of it, and I was like, <laughs> yes, right away. Astro twins, yes. Don't worry, I'm there. <laughs> and I'll admit, as a Sagittarius, I didn't even know what it was at first. It just was like, I have to do this. No, so I'm kind of kidding, but but Starstruck is uh, it's going to be a virtual astrology summit. Uh, it just came to me in a flash, and I, as I'm in this no- North Node, also opposition right now, too. The nodes in the sky are opposite the nodes in my chart. So it was like, I got, um, so the idea, so Starstruck is a virtual astrology summit where we're going to bring together amazing astrologers like you to have conversations about 2020 and beyond. Now, every year, my sister and I write an annual horoscope book. Um, So, um, and we do a webinar usually at the beginning of the year, but I thought this is a new decade and I can talk about what's happening in 2020, sure, but wouldn't it be so much more interesting to have conversations with other astrologers like you, who we admire and respect and, uh, every astrologer has their favorite thing or their own unique perspective. And let's give the world this beautiful summit, this kind of virtual celestial think tank of people, of uh, amazing ideas so that people can have something all year that they're all month or whatever in January to chew on and think about and, you know, take like how do I want how do I want to move into this new decade powerfully and with inspiration what's my role on the planet I don't know how long this planet is going to be around or not it depends who you listen to or what channel you tune to on the tv but like let's give people some hope and real information not magical thinking but real information that they can use so that's what starstruck is going to be it's a it's a bunch of recorded conversations uh, with our favorite astrologers uh, talking to me or Tali about the new decade. So, And what yeah. astrologers are going to be? I know I'm part of it. Like you said, are going to be I, one of them. I, I mean, didn't know anything about it. As soon as the Astro Twins, I'm there. Don't worry about <laughs> it. I was right there. But I'm really happy to learn more about it right now with you. Yeah. But I know that you've got other incredible astrologers as part of this event. Yeah. We've got Susan Miller from Astrology Zone, the legendary Susan Miller. We've got Sam Reynolds of Unlock Astrology, Mecca Woods, um, Aliza Kelly, Annabelle Gatt, who writes for Vice, Jessica Lanyadu, uh, one of the Kabbalah astrologers, uh, Rachel Schwartz. She's an amazing Kabbalistic astrologer with the human design astrologer, Aaron Claire Jones, um, a bunch of people. I think just all in all about going to be about 25 to 30 astrologers, uh, trying to keep it really diverse points of view and interesting um, 
Yes, we're going to talk about everything. You and I are going to talk about uh, the outer planets and how yes. they're going to shape the new I decade as we move yeah. into all these air signs. Um, that's going to be really interesting. All those patterns. Um, and yeah. Yeah, the new decade is such a, it's such a passion of mine, actually, like maybe mm. a year ago almost or six months ago. I actually did a video like just diving into the decade ahead because I really oh, think it is so exciting. Like before I even looked at the year ahead, I was looking at the decade ahead. I think part of that is just being very big picture with my placements in my chart. But oh, yes, uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But also because I do think that it is the sense of a lot of people feeling like they're beginning again. Whereas this year, 2019, was about closures, all those south node conjunctions that were playing out. But we are going to have in 2020, it starts with a conjunction of Pluto and Saturn and other stuff yeah. too, but that's the big conjunction. And yeah. then it ends with the great conjunction yeah. of Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius as well. So it really is about oh us being gosh. on a brand new path. And so what are some things that you are thinking about in terms of beginnings with 2020 you know, not only the type of stuff that we're going to talk about and that you guys are going to be talking about and starstruck with all these different uh, people, but just what are your thoughts as well about what makes this coming year so exciting and worth diving into? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's a new decade. So that always gives like a little bit of anticipation. Like it's a new, a new chance, a fresh start. Let's put what we've learned behind us and start over. But I'm sure there's also a lot of anxiety going around in the, in the air. I mean, I feel like 2019 was because of Jupiter and Sagittarius and Saturn and Capricorn giving us that double strength. It was like, I say it was like having one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake all year. So everyone that I've talked to is like, start something, go really big. And then go, oh, but wait, what have I done? Oh my God. And, you know, with Jupiter moving into Capricorn, um, enjoy, I, I just, I feel like there's a chance to finally really kind of put all these ideas into form. I mean, the fact that it's an election year in the U.S. is interesting. We've got the North Node and going into Gemini, crossing over Donald Trump's son and North Node during the month of the election. So there's gonna there's a lot of interesting transits, um, but we also have a Cancer North Node, which is elevating women as well. So we can have a female president just as easily as a re-election of an orange president. It's it's a it's a year, um, and that's I think going to be a real turning point because we're moving from all this heavy duty Earth energy with all the Capricorn and Uranus and Taurus to finally getting some air, some breathing room from the you know Saturn going into Aquarius, even if it's Saturn, and then Jupiter at the end of the year, and then twenty twenty four we've got Pluto going into Aquarius, and so everything's moving from into that air mode. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really curious about where that's going to take us as a, as a civilization. And you know, look, you, yeah. Yeah. And you know, you mentioned Samuel Reynolds uh, and you, a yeah. bunch of brilliant astrologers right there that you mentioned, but I remember at the recent, the most recent Norwalk conference, I was in conversation with Samuel Reynolds he really is such a brilliant astrologer. I, I can't say enough things about him, not only in terms of his astrology, but also just in terms of the spirit that he brings, just this very expansive, very generous spirit. I feel better for knowing him. And again, many of the astrologers you mentioned, I feel better for knowing them as well. But at the Norwalk conference recently, he and I were talking about you know all this air energy building. And I was saying that I feel... Like we have called this the information age and it's like we haven't even scratched the surface. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, like that sense of what is the information age is just gonna go to a whole other level, this new level, this, this yeah. sense of all of a sudden our reality being very different um, and it's Absolutely. rooted in information and technology and the internet, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I think we've been in maybe sort of a data age, but in a very earthy kind of way, like these are the facts and figures. It's been kind of more of the money age in a way, material, terrestrial, and information in the way it's going to come through the air, I agree, is going to feel very different. Uh, lifestyle, the way we just even communicate, share our thoughts. Yeah, I can't wait to talk to you about that. In our yeah. starstruck conversation, we're really going to dive into that. And you know, the um, what brought me to Mexico, I, I sometimes I share my Mexico journey as well, because I've lived here. here. For, yeah, I've lived here for almost seven years now. And what happened was, I came here for the end of the Mayan calendar, which was December 21st, 2012. Yeah. And so I knew for years ahead of time, I was like, okay, I'm going to be there. I have to go there. I have to go there. Mm -hmm. So I was, you know, it, it kind of came together and I came here and I just remember as part of that whole trip and that journey, um, when I went home, I just knew that I had to be here. Like mm -hmm. I just karmically felt so aligned with Cancun specifically and I just knew that my soul, my spirit, whatever my karma was, I didn't know how long it would be for, but I just knew that I needed to be in Cancun. And I literally waited six weeks because I had Lady Gaga tickets. And the <laughs> day after the Lady Gaga concert, I moved myself uh, right here to Cancun. And I've been here since then. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, we've been going to Tulum every year for oh, seven wow. years. So, so since the next, early 2013, so about the same time. So the next yeah. time you come, we will figure it out. We will find a way to meet and we'll and be in front come. of the camera together without a yes. split screen. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But you know, the Mayans uh, believed and, and what the end of the Mayan calendar actually signified, it was like the close of multiple calendars. And they believed that it was the end of one, oh, actually several major cycles. And it was the beginning of another. And so we were ending a cycle of humanity that was rooted in sort of the physical and, and what it was that we could create on a very physical, tangible level. And we were now going to step into a period of time that would be defined as unity consciousness. And I was thinking about, you know, cultures in the world, like when you go to places in the world where the charts, the countries, the cities have a lot of air in them, mm -hmm. there tends to be a lot of equality as well. There's oh, something wow. about cerebral energy. It's like a level playing field, right? Like if you're judged by the ideas and the thoughts and the communication and the way that you communicate, it, it does allow for a more level playing field where in some cultures, we don't really see that. Mm -hmm. And so I think that this is going to be, on the one hand, like a big equalizer, right? All yeah. this air energy coming. Yeah. 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 Well, Saturn was an Aquarius, uh, I believe, during the Martin Luther King, I have a dream speech. So, mm. yeah. Oh, we're going to get a few really great speeches, that's for sure. Definitely. With Jupiter, the great conjunction of Jupiter oh, and yes. Saturn at the end of 2020. On the oh, winter yes. solstice, yeah. yeah. We're definitely going to give people uh, a forecast for that in our starstruck talk, for sure. And how to prepare for that all year, because honestly, you know, there's going to be there's going to be some work to do to get there with all the Capricorn. We're going to put a few pieces in place, I think, you know, build a few structures to really be able to move into that that air. And I believe, you know, I believe that things that we have a lot of free will and we, that the planets uh, open these windows of opportunity. And that if we really understand what the opportunity is, then we can rise into it and, and really harness it and bring it into the world. So, you know, the, the air, I think that, you know, the shit, there's a shadow side of air and then there's a highest expression. So I can't wait to talk to you about how to really make sure we tap into what the, the real opportunity is there. Yeah. And the highest expression in our own lives as well, like our own intention for our lives and our sphere of influence. And um, it just sounds so amazing uh, for me personally, just to be a part of it, to be a part yeah. of Starstruck. But also, I think that I, I just really believe I felt it right away when you mentioned it, when I first got that email uh, inviting me to be a part of it. Again, not even knowing what it was right away, but it just felt like 
this is something that's going to matter to a lot of people in their lives. Yeah, and so That's what I want for it. And I hope that anyone who's watching this feels that way too, because you're definitely invited and welcomed. And, you know, I'm hoping it's the beginning of a, a big, speaking of that air sign, a, a dialogue for everyone, you know, to help co-create what the new decade will be. Because I know, I'm hoping that the talks we have inspire other people to think and go, oh, you know, why don't I do this in my community? Or why don't I do this in the wider world? Or why don't I, why am I keeping this idea to myself? Why don't I say it? You know, I think I want people to have permission to, you know, I feel like the people that actually want to do good things in the world are, are often the ones that stay quiet and second guess themselves. Well, you know, the uninformed are usually the loudest. <laughs> and I just, I, I'm hoping that through starstruck and astrology and the discovery of it, that more people give themselves permission to share their creative and positive ideas with the world. Am yeah. I sad or what? Yeah. I know that's a beautiful way to put it. I was thinking as you were, uh, as you just said what you did, that there's a sense that the people who want to put good into the world, they tend to be sensitive and that's what, you know, holds people back. That's what makes people resist. But it is also, you know, one of the, the most empowering things we can do for ourselves and for others, because when we share, we give other people permission to share themselves or something authentic within themselves at the same time. But I think also that what happens is we, we start thinking what if, and we go like several steps ahead, right? Right yeah. now, like you're having Saturn on your North node and you were inspired <laughs> to do this amazing event. And really, that's, that's where we are right now. And this is what matters, this moment. And I like to say, you know, this moment is the present and the present is where the power is. And right mm -hmm. now, wherever people are on their journey, yeah. I'm sure that they're going to find so much to gain uh, from this incredible uh, group of really world-renowned astrologers coming together for this event. Yeah, that's a beautiful way of putting it. So, and in, in true air sign fashion, we're making sure the technology is good. We're using Kajabi so that it's like a, you know, a course experience that you can bookmark and go back to again and again. There's going to be lots of bonuses. All the astrologers are going to contribute a little bonus video or PDF. So newsflash are going to be contributing one. No. Um, yeah. <laughs> but everybody's going to share something. So just everybody's just armed with really beautiful, amazing, powerful cosmic intel to get through the years. So we just, there's, you know, I know, there's a, there's lots of reasons to be stressed and anxious, but there's also lots of reasons to be positive and unstuck and in action. And that's what we want to, people need encouragement and they need hope and they need clarity. So we're going to give them that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Was there anything else you wanted people to know about whether it's this event or about you, anything else you wanted to share? I mean, just, uh, just um, it's an honor to connect with people who are looking at themselves and looking at their place in the world and actually care enough to do that. And so, yeah, you're you're invited warmly and enthusiastically to be part of Starstruck. Um, you will also get a free copy of our 2020 horoscope book, the PDF version, with your ticket, and it's very affordable. So, um, yeah, we just we want. We want, we're giving you that as a gift as well. So uh, all the dates and uh, important transits are in there for you for all year long. So yeah, and I just can't wait to, to talk to you more, Nadia. Yeah, we're going to have fun. We're going to hang out and talk and, and I'm sure that the time will just go by like that, but a lot will come forward, obviously, as it is right now. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so know. much. Inside, there's like some little girl part of me that's like doing cartwheels right now. <laughs> really, this means so much to me. Just, um, thank you for the work that you have done. And thank you for just being, uh, you know, just this inspiring person in the world of astrology and, and the work that you do and, and how it continues to be part of bringing more people into this practice that really has meant so much to me in my life and and mm. I know it has to you as well and so yes thank wow. you for this moment thank you for inviting me as part of this amazing upcoming event and um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you and your sister continue
to put out into the world the incredible things that you will continue to do in astrology. Thank you. Likewise. So to be continued. Yes. Well, All thank right. you so much, everybody. Thank you for watching. And again, I will put information for Starstruck in the description below. And, um, you know, as was said, it's a super affordable price point. You get so much in exchange and you get to be part of this, you know, learning experience with so many world-class astrologers. So I hope that you will join us. And thank you again for joining me. Yay. Ophi. Ophi from the Astro Twins. Really very special moment. And thank you all out there for sharing this moment uh, with me, with us, uh, and for having us as part of your journey in some way. Thank you. Until we connect again, take care. Bye. <laughs>